really has revolutionized some of the things we're doing in terms of therapeutic EUS. Gab from Boston is here with me, but I'm going to demonstrate steps of the deployment. So if we just zoom in on me, please. First of all is a good double check of your stent box. So we've talked about saddle length. One question is how do you choose the saddle length? Almost always a 10 millimeter saddle length is fine. Uh, very seldom I've used the 15 millimeter saddle length. So that bit's easy. And for this case, we've just seen a 10 millimeter saddle length is perfect. The next thing is size of stent, and that's the width. So here I'm demonstrating the 20 millimeter, which has a role in walled off pancreatic necrosis drainage, possibly a role in gastroenterostomy, which we're, we're not going to talk about now. But generally speaking, the steps of the deployment are identical regardless. So we're just going to step, um, go through it. So this is how it comes out the box. We're going to wipe this sheath with a wet cloth because it's got a hydrophilic coating and it'll go down the scope a lot easier. We've finished doing our diagnostic EUS at this point. We're happy with our position. And if you just come to my hands, so just zoom in now on my hands. We put that straight onto the biopsy channel and a really firm twist of the locking bung down there. Make sure that the Boston logo is pointing at you. That's not just advertising. That's because our locks and everything else is on this side. OK, there are then two things to understand about the hot axios anatomy. The black handle de deploys the entire device in and out of the scope. The grey handle deploys the flanges in steps two and four. OK, once we're happy, I'm going to do my final uh, analysis of Doppler, make sure no vessels are in the way, ensure I'm in the right place. I'm then going to ask my colleague to put an 035 wire down the channel. In most scenarios, I'm keen to put a pigtail across or in very tricky um, interventions, it may help you in the context of maldeployment. We don't want too many maldeployments, but if you do maldeploy and you've got a wire through the maldeployed hot axios, it can be a game saver. So can I ask you to pass the 035? Now this is a bit fiddly because it's a very tiny channel, but this will save you time cannulating the hot axios stent once it's deployed. If, if you're intending to put a pigtail through it, and we'll come to whether that's the right thing to do throughout our discussions. Now, don't be tempted to put this all the way out the hot axial stent because your cauterizing tip won't work. So as soon as we're on a decent stiff bit of wire, I'm going to ask you to stop. So that wire is halfway down my hot axial. It's not all the way to the tip. So we're not going to get in the way of the cauterizing tip. OK, so if we just zoom in on the, our little target here. So the perspex thing represents our target. So just zoom, zoom right in for me. I sound a bit like Keith Floyd here, don't I? Zoom right in, right in. OK. So the first thing is to unlock <coughs> at the bottom. Step one is getting the hot axios out of my stent. At this point, we're going to put the, um, the cauterizing wire on. Um, we haven't got a slide with settings, but it's auto cut effect for 100 watts coagulation off. So monopolar. Good idea to have a little frame of that in your iPhone or notes. At this point, this is now free. I can now throw the hot axios out of the stent. Are you seeing that there? Try and get this out as far as possible. Certainly at least a thumb width from the lock. But if you've got a nice big target, as is the case in Waldorf necrosis, you can go all the way. As soon as you've got your, your, your stent as far as possible, you're going to put the lock back on. That then locks the stent. It's not going to travel in or out of my scope. There's then a yellow safety lock that comes off. I'm now going to ask my colleague to take the, uh, no, sorry, the Erby wire off because we finished cutting. Um, so we're in. At this point, you could pass the wire. I usually do that after step two. Step two is distal flange deployment. There is a lock on the grey handle. My hand at the top. And just watch what happens in the target. There's going to be a satisfying click at step two. Click. You've hopefully heard that. The distal flange at this stage looks like a rugby ball. If I deploy all of that stent now, it's going to float around in my target. So step three is all important. I'm going to unlock the stent. I'm going to move to step three. I'm going to bring that hot axial stent back. Two things will happen as you do that. The distal flange will go from a rugby ball to a football. So it changes shape. You're going to see this on a US. The second thing that happens is that the metal sheath will bend as you pull back. That means I've got 
our position on the distal wall of the target. It's very important at that point we lock this handle um, so it's not going to move in and out anymore. Step four, at this point I might, by the way, pass my wire. Okay. So everything's stable. There's my wire to make the, the subsequent pigtail nice and easy. Step four, you won't see anything happen on a US for stop. step four. Unlock, gray sheath. So that's in, the, that's in the working channel of the scope. Not a lot happened visually. The final step is perhaps the most crucial. I'm gonna unlock and I need to pull the sheath back whilst delivering the stent. So there's a three step maneuver for that. One is I need to push the sheath out. I need to look away with my big wheel and I need a little bit of clockwise torque to bring the stent into view. Okay, so all in one. So can you just pretend we're looking away, looking away, pushing out clockwise torque. And there we have it. So a triple maneuver.